Well, hello everybody. Welcome to C180 Kids Church Online. So glad to be back with you here again today. Today we're going to be learning about a man in the Bible named Joseph. Now this isn't the same Joseph who was Jesus' earthly father. This is a, a man who lived a long time before Jesus in the Old Testament in the book of Genesis we read about him. And uh, his story is very interesting. So we're going to be learning all about what happened to him. And uh, you know, he was one of Jacob's 12 sons. And uh, the Bible actually says that he was Jacob's favorite son. And that caused some problems for him because it made his older brothers very jealous. And, uh, you know, it's usually not a good idea. Not very wise of Jacob to, to have a favorite son in the first place. Uh, he wasn't perfect, that's for sure. He loved all of his sons, but he did show special favor on Joseph. And uh, we're going to see what happened to him. And God's hand was on Joseph's life and in a very powerful way. So I'm excited to get into this story today. Why don't you go ahead and take a couple minutes and we have a worship video for you. And then the story, um, the beginning part of, the, of Joseph's story. And I'll be right back. This is the story of a guy named Joseph. Now, Joseph lived a long time ago, like in Bible times, and he had a good life. But Joseph was about to have a really bad day, like the worst day ever. See, Joseph's dad was named Jacob, and Jacob had a lot of sons. No, more than that. Keep going. There you go. Twelve. He had a full dozen, and that is a lot of mouths to feed. 
but of all of Jacob's sons, he loved Joseph the most. He was his dad's favorite son, and everybody knew it. He even gave Joseph a special fancy robe. They called it the coat of many colors because, well, it had many colors. Joseph got along well with his little brother Benjamin, but not so much with his ten older brothers. They started to pick on him because they knew that he was their dad's favorite. Jealous much? But Joseph wasn't just special because he was his dad's favorite. God gave Joseph a unique gift, a talent. He spoke to Joseph through dreams, and Joseph was able to interpret what those dreams meant. Joseph had two dreams about himself. In the first dream, he and his brothers were bringing in bundles of wheat from the field. Suddenly, Joseph's bundle of wheat stood up in the middle, and all of his brothers' bundles circled around and bowed down to Joseph's bundle. In the second dream, he was in the sky, and the sun, moon, and eleven stars began to do just as the wheat had done. They all started bowing down to him. Well, those are some weird dreams, but Joseph was excited about them. So excited that he told his brothers about the dreams. His brothers, not so excited. They did not like the message that the dreams implied. You think you're better than us? They asked. So they came up with a plan to kill him. Yep, you heard me right, actually kill him. They took Joseph out into a field out of sight from their father, and they stripped him of his coat, and then they threw him into a pit. You know, there's a reason they call them armpits, because pits stink. So Joseph was in this pit, looking up at his brothers who were trying to decide how to kill him, when a group of slave traders came traveling by, and this gave one of the brothers an idea. He said, instead of killing Joseph, let's sell him to these slave traders and make some money. So that's what they did. They sold their own brother for 20 pieces of silver. His entire life was turned upside down for a few coins. Like I said, worst day ever. Joseph, who was his father's favorite son and chosen by God to do great things, was suddenly sold as a slave by his jealous brothers. Big problem. But Joseph's story was not over. God had a plan and a purpose for his life that was bigger than anything he could possibly imagine. Oh man, I wonder what's going to happen to Joseph, sold into slavery by his very own brothers. Can you even imagine? You know, sometimes things happen in our lives that just aren't right. They're not fair, people mistreat us, and that's exactly what happened to Joseph, isn't it? And you know, even though it wasn't right what happened to him, God's hand was upon him, and he, God worked all things together for good in Joseph's situation, even though it was so evil what happened. We're going to see in the next clip here how God turned it all around and brought Joseph to a place of great favor and influence in, um, in the world, really. And we're still reading about him even today. Imagine that. God's hand was mightily upon Joseph, and so we're going to learn all about the next part of his story right now. Go ahead and watch this clip. This is the rest of the story of Joseph. Now Joseph had a big problem. One day he was living in a house where he was the favorite son. Then the next day he was sold into slavery by his jealous brothers. But Joseph's situation was about to go from bad to worse. Well, actually from bad to not so bad to worse. The slave traders took Joseph to Egypt where he was sold to a man by the name of Potiphar. In Potiphar's house, Joseph started off as a normal slave. But Joseph was such a good worker that Potiphar soon put Joseph in charge of his entire house. So even though he was a slave, things were starting to look up. And then she came along. One day when Potiphar wasn't around, his wife tried to get Joseph to do things with her that were wrong. But Joseph refused, and this made Potiphar's wife mad. Like, really mad. So mad that she got him thrown into prison. First the pit, now this? Joseph's getting thrown into a lot of things. But even in jail, God took care of Joseph. Soon the guards saw the same thing in him that Potiphar did, and they put Joseph in charge of the whole jail. So if Joseph was in jail, and he was put in charge of the jail, why didn't he let himself out of jail? Anyway, when he was in jail, two of Joseph's friends had dreams that they told him about. Remember how Joseph can interpret dreams? Well, that's what he did for his friends. 
It was good news for the king's servant. His dream meant that he was going to be freed. But not so much for the baker. He was going to be killed. What could a baker possibly do to deserve to be put to death? Did he burn the king's birthday cake or something? Anyway, everything that Joseph said would happen actually happened. His friend, the king's servant, was soon out of prison and back serving the king. And the baker? Well, let's just say he baked his last cake. Then one day, Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, started having some strange dreams himself. In the dream, there were seven big, fat, healthy cows and seven skinny, sickly cows. The seven skinny cows ate the seven fat cows. Why is everyone having such weird dreams? This dream was troubling Pharaoh, and no one could tell him what it meant. But the king's servant remembered Joseph's gift, so Pharaoh sent for Joseph to interpret his dream. Could work out great for Joseph, or it could be a disaster. Remember what happened to the baker? But God was with Joseph, and he showed him what the Pharaoh's dream meant. The seven fat cows represented seven years of really good crops. But after that, there was going to be seven years of famine, where food was really hard to find. Pharaoh was so impressed with Joseph that he put Joseph in charge of all of the food in Egypt. And Joseph came up with a plan so that everyone could have enough food for the coming famine. Then one day, Joseph's brothers showed up in Egypt to ask for help. They were going through a famine too, and they needed food to survive. Joseph recognized them right away, but they did not recognize him. When Joseph saw his brothers bowing down before him, he knew that he finally had a chance to get revenge on the very people who sold him as a slave. But instead, Joseph forgave his brothers. He invited them all to come live with him in Egypt. God took care of Joseph and used him to save his whole family. Even when things were at their worst, God still had a plan and a purpose for Joseph's life. The End well, Isn't that awesome? I love the story of Joseph. It is honestly one of my favorite stories of the Bible, especially of the Old Testament. And I just love how God's hand was on Joseph's life throughout all of his hardships, all of the injustices and things that happened that were just not right in his life. People lying about him, putting, he went into jail, he had no, um, there was no reason for him to be in there. He was falsely accused, he had done nothing wrong, but he found himself um, in some pretty bad places of not of his own doing. But you know what? Even in prison, even in Potiphar's house, God's hand was on him, his hand of favor, and uh, he was raised up to places of leadership and um, had favor on him even in those hard places. I love that. And ultimately, God used all the bad things in Joseph's life to bring about uh, him having a hand in saving not only his own family but the whole land all of Egypt and all of the surrounding lands because of the wisdom that Joseph had in interpreting the Pharaoh's dreams and the plan that God gave him and what an awesome story of how no matter what happens in our lives no matter what things just don't seem right and they aren't right God is working even in those things the Bible says in the book of Romans that all things work together for the good that God makes all things to work together for the good of those who love him and and who are called according to his purpose. And we, as followers and believers in Jesus Christ, we are called according to his purpose. And so God makes all things work together. We just need to keep our hearts focused on him, keep our minds, our hearts, our lives, doing what is right and focused on Jesus. And God works everything out. And we never have to fear or worry. And uh, we can just trust that God, God is working deliverance behind the scenes, even when we don't see it. God is just so good, so faithful. And and uh, we have a little activity to remind us of the story of Joseph. And I uh, want you to go ahead and take a couple minutes and watch this video of Bella, Gabby, and Lexi working on theirs. And I'll be right back.
as you saw there, we have a craft about Joseph. It's two different pictures of Joseph here. The first one, of course, is when he had on that special robe that his father had made for him. And the second one here is from when he uh, was a leader in, in Egypt and he was raised up to second in command. And he had, of course, different, different clothes and a different look then. And uh, so this is to remind us, there's two different scripture verses here. And uh, talking about that even though, you know, his dad gave him a special robe, his brothers hated him for it, but the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and he gave him favor. And whatever he did, the Lord made it prosper. That's taken from uh, Genesis 39 there, a couple different verses pieced together. And just a fun way to remember, uh, you know, that, that Joseph, his story is just an example that God is good, he's faithful, and no matter what happens in our lives, uh, God, God will come through for us. He sees, He sees it through for us. And you know, of course, you don't need to do the tissue paper and the tin foil. I did that just as a, something a little extra besides just coloring. You just color. If you have something besides tissue paper, maybe construction paper or anything, anything fun and colorful, ribbon. You know that can work. If you have anything like gold and shiny, that's even better than silver and shiny because it's just more um, probably appropriate to what what Joseph had. More probably more gold uh, to as an ornate, um, you know, necklace and just whatever he was wearing there. Um, but again, just something a little extra than just coloring, but make it your own, do whatever you want to do with this. And uh, of course, in the description section below, you'll see a link that will lead you right to the, um, the file of this. You can print it right out that we've created here. I love these characters here. Um, there's a website that offers them free for to, to use, and I'm just really having fun with those. We've used them before in one of our activities, and uh, hope you have fun with it too. So be blessed. We love you. We miss you, and we will see you next time. Bye-bye. 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 B